to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making for you today is seafood chowder. I had this request from one of our viewers um, to make a seafood chowder, um, but uh, mainly to do something with lobster as well. So I included lobster in the seafood chowder. So I got, um, again, lobster, I got cod, um, shrimp, I got some salmon and scallops. And like you said, you can put whatever seafood you want to put in it. And I got three pounds of seafood in this bowl. We're going to be sauteing some um, onions. We're going to be sauteing some fat pork. Um, that's salted pork. And for those of you that know, um, you can get it in your grocery store. I will be including that on my website as well. We're going to be also including in our seafood chowder. We're going to be using uh, four potatoes chopped. Uh, two medium carrots. I'm going to put putting some celery in it while the potatoes is boiling, but I'm going to take that back out. Um, two cups of car uh, carnation milk or evaporated milk. So what I'm going to do now is uh, start frying my uh, salted pork and our onions. Okay, so we're going to be adding about a tablespoonful of olive oil and we're going to be doing a tablespoonful of butter. In there and then we're going to put our, our salted pork in with it so what we're going to do is fry this down until it's crispy and golden brown okay, so our uh, salted pork is uh, frying nice so what we're going to be doing now is adding three cups of hot water to this water and we're going to start to boil on our vegetables. We're going to be putting our potatoes and our carrots and our celery into this boiler while we're waiting for our, our uh, salted pork. Okay, so I'm going to dunk this into there. And what I'm going to do as well is add in a few pinches of sea salt just to start to, to boil on this air to get it uh, seasoned. This is probably the only time you would need to, um, to season your vegetables. And I'm going to add some pepper and a little bit of salt to our salted pork. Okay, so I'm also going to be putting a lid on my boiler. So that was three cups of hot water. Um, if you're, if you, this is a, a serving for about four people. Um, if you want more, you can double all of these uh, ingredients, including the water. So and what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of um, pepper. I think I'm going to not add the salt because it is a salt uh, pork. So just a couple of grates of black pepper. You can also use white pepper. I'm going to continue frying this until it's golden brown. Okay, so this is looking wonderful and it's starting to get golden brown. So I'm going to give it about another minute and we're going to take it out, put it in a little container, put it to the side, and then I'm going to drain this grease off the pan and add in my uh, onions. Okay, so I'm going to be taking this, what we would call it now, is scrunchins. I'm going to take it out of the pan. It's going to look like that. It's nice and crispy. And, and then I'm going to drain off the grease, like I was saying. Now I'm going to add in my onions, and that was three medium chopped onions. And we're going to let that fry until it gets just uh, transparent, not brown. Okay, to our onions, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to be adding as well some black pepper. Just a couple of grapes. We're not going to add any salt. I don't want to take the liquid out of my onions. I just want to start to fry them down. Okay, our onions are coming along nicely. It smells amazing in there. And it looks like our potatoes and carrot is starting to boil. Um, and that was uh, three cups of hot water. And then uh, after when these onions start to, uh, to break down, we'll add them to the pot. And then we're going to add our fish, our seafood, and I'll tell you each step as we go. Um, but like I said, it's a simple, easy dish. Don't take a long time to do. And I will definitely be sharing you um, this recipe 
on our website and YouTube station. Okay, it looks like our onions are ready to, uh, to put into with the vegetables. I don't want them to get golden brown because, like you said, uh, this is a, a seafood chowder. Everything is nice and white and bright. You don't need any burnt onions. So I'm going to take my lid off, that to the side, and I'm going to scoop this into my boiler. So I'm going to stir this around here now. I'm going to keep the celery in there at this point. And I'm gonna let it boil for about five minutes with all of this in there together. And then I'll take the lid off and we'll add in the seafood. But right now, it's just the vegetables and the onions and that celery. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove the lid. I'm gonna be taking out the celery. I'm gonna discard this. And now I'm gonna add in all of my seafood. And like I said, this is about um, I'm thinking three pounds. It might be a little bit more because I like a lot of seafood in there, but three pounds is more than enough to add in unless you, you want uh, more in there. Look at all the beautiful seafood. We got the cod and the, and the salmon, lobster, some shrimp. And we also got uh, scallops. So I'm going to stir this around here now so that it's evenly incorporated. We're going to let this boil for about another five minutes until the seafood start to get a little tender and break away. And then we're going to add the milk and the rest of our ingredients. Mm -hmm. seafood chowder is coming along great. We're going to be using a quarter cup of cold water and a quarter of cup of flour. And white flour is fine if um, you know if if you uh, I would say allergic to flour, you could use cornstarch. But right now we're using flour. And what we're going to do, we're making a paste to put into this to help it thicken. And then after we're going to add our water. We don't want to add our water, our milk. We don't want to add it first because I don't want the, the milk to boil. And you need to have um, hot milk. So you can probably warm that in your microwave or in a little pot. So this is uh, what it's going to look like. And now we're going to add it to our bowl. So this is what it's going to look like when it's ready to start adding in your paste and make sure you shake it up good because you want to take the lumps out of it you don't need to have that in there lumps meaning flour lumps. and we're going to add it in gradually and mix it if it looks like it's starting to thicken you don't need to use all of it just some of it but that's just your base there a little bit more Okay, so that looks amazing and it smells delicious in here. So what we're going to do, our hot milk, we're going to add two cups of this hot milk to our chowder. So you just dump it all in like that and mix it around so it's all incorporated. Okay, so you're going to let that cook for just a little bit longer and I'm going to top this up with about a half a tablespoon full of butter so I like that creaminess and stir that in there and then I'm going to be putting in a few pieces of, of our uh, salt pork that we sauteed and I'm going to keep a few pieces to put on top of the chowder when I serve it and I'll show you what that looks like now once this is all combined so let this cook for another couple of minutes and then everything should be ready to, to all eat. Okay, now our chowder is done, our seafood chowder. I'm going to reach for the pot there now. I'm going to scoop up a nice alping there. My mouth is drooling here now because I'm thinking of it. Uh, I just had a little sip in between just to see what it was like. And my phrase was, it's too good to eat. <laughs> That's a Newfoundland saying. All right, so let's scoop up a nice alping. It smells absolutely delicious in here. And as you can see, it's nice and creamy. I'm gonna take some more of that seafood. And it's got tons of seafood in there. What I'm going to do is top it with some of that um, salt pork that we turn into uh, like nice and crispy. And I'm going to be putting in 
just a little sprinkle of dill. Okay, so I'm going to be adding in just another little bit of dill. So this is what it looks like. Absolutely delicious. I can't wait to get into it. And I also got a batch of fresh rolls that I made this morning to add with this. So, and that's on Bonita's Kitchen. You can get it on the bread recipe. So also I wanted to show you, and I'm sure anyone that have made seafood chowder before have done this. Um, if you don't eat all of your, your chowder or you think you're going to have some left over, bottle it while it's hot. Um, it's going to be a little tricky here. But just put it into your mason jar. Um, nice helping. You can fill it right to the top and then uh, after clean off around your, your glass bowl or your glass mason jar I should say and then put the lid on and leave it there. You'll, um, you'll hear when it's sealed because it'll pop. Okay, so basically what I mean about wiping around the rim of your mason jar is just go like this, clean it off nice so as it'll seal. A nice fresh lid, cleaned and sealed on there. And if it's sealed on tight, it'll, it'll pop and you'll tell that it's sealed. Keep it in your fridge. You can have it in there up to a week and you can eat it there. So, this is our episode for Seafood Chowder. I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, the viewer that suggested this uh, recipe for us. And uh, please send in any more suggestions if, uh, if you've got anything that you used to enjoy as kids in Newfoundland. So thank you once again for joining me for Bonita's Kitchen. I hope you found this uh, recipe for Seafood Chowder uh, helpful to you. I will post the recipe on uh, Bonita's Kitchen, um, the Facebook page, YouTube, and also www.bonitaskitchen.com. Um, so thank you again for joining me for Bonita's Kitchen, and you have a wonderful day.